I'm still worried about May. It will be alright, after all. Oh, the live stream has started. <clears throat> Greetings, captains. Welcome back to the Hyperion Lounge. Come on, it will be fine. Even Dr. Mobius doesn't stand a chance against May. No, 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 this time it's the Ponya. You'll understand after watching the trailer. Okay, let's see. ヤバ。別れがらすが残したもの。戻ってくれ。二人で。たくさん。どうこうしゃが一人増えても。そうなの。君は気にしないよね。人でも物でも。報酬が十分なら手に入れてあげるよ。あなたは何が欲しいの? ヤバい。<笑> Oh, I can't believe it. This ending was way too intense. And it looks like Miss Raven is caught in a tough battle. I know, right? Remember what you said before? It will be fine. In her time of need, a new friend is here to help. Oh, yes. Part of Phyllis, the owner of the Illusion Shop. That's right. Always using restocking her shop as an excuse to slack off. The owner of the Elysian shop makes her debut. I didn't think that she'd be such a cute kitty. As May delves deeper into the Elysian realm, the remaining five flame chasers will also appear during this journey to give May guidance and answers. But first, let's see if this adorable cat shop owner can really help May. Before becoming a flame chaser, Parophilis lived in the nefarious Sundown Alley. She relied on her craftiness to get by. Now a series of coincidences led Pardo to joining the Moths. And after another series of coincidences, she officially became a flame chaser. I'm not sure that's how coincidences work. But even after becoming Reverie's Calico, she still claims to be the weakest flame chaser. Now let's find out how tough the shop owner who can get her paws on anything for the right price really is. Reverie's Calico is an IMG type ice elemental SP melee fighter. Compared with the other flame chasers, her fighting style is more likely. She makes larger movements, incorporating both the agility of a cat and traits of a dancer. She wields the new type of weapon, a chakram, and fights with a buddy can. Ken may be small in size, but she can prove formidable when paired with Pardo. Tap attack and reverse calico will separate her chakram into two and perform a five sequence slash with incredible agility. The fourth strike will summon a cute catpole to attack. This attack reminds me of White Comet Kiana's Neko Charm. The paw looks so soft and fluffy. Actually, depending on Ken's mood, the combo attack will vary. When Ken is angry, Reverie's Calico can unleash double scratch to deal ice damage. Now when Ken is well behaved, she freezes up. After Reverie's Calico uses combo attack twice, predation can be released by tapping weapon skill. It can be linked to the fourth sequence of her basic attack. Tap out in the gigantified can will crash into enemies from the sky, doing a ton of damage. If her out hits a Nihilist seed with critical HP, it can perform an insta kill similar to Raven's Deathly Scythe. In fact, it sent the gift code crashing in. Furthermore, the Chakram, which is a new type of weapon, 
changes its active skill depending on the character using it. A character wielding different chakrams will cast the same weapon active. Reverie's Calico's weapon active skill is Paw Barrage, which can cause Kent's mood to switch. Piranha Phantasma is Reverie's Calico's recommended weapon, which can better integrate her weapon active with her flexible mechanics and damage cycle. It will add a lot to your overall combat experience. More fun chakra mechanics will be introduced later on. In version 5.6, we also added Gilded Libre, a craftable chakram made by the Helix Crafts owner herself. Rumor has it that because it can change its lengths at will, the workshop owner often uses to measure materials. Next up is Reverie's Calico's recommended stigmata, the feline guardian set, Busted. The stigma art has an exotic style that also borrows some elements from mythology. Bastet is an Egyptian goddess with cat's hat and human's body. A cat stigma for a cat. What a perfect match. Shop owner Pardo is looking pretty strong. And now, the remaining four flame chasers will also reveal themselves. Let's let the trailer show us the other flame chasers and reveal their deeply hidden secrets.空と雲青と白まだ描いてない部分はあなたの好きな色あなたの色で描きたいのヒーローにはヒーローの生き方 凡人には凡人の生き方がある。他人のように生きるのは別にダメってわけじゃないけど、本当に必要なの？ <音楽><音楽><音楽><音楽> 出発前の祈祷を捧げることしかできなかった。動き出せ。永訣の名を背負ったのは、それを終わらせるためなのだから。現実は絶対じゃないし、唯一でもない。現実は精密に動作してる機械にすぎないならば私たちの手で徹底的に解析しそしてただ一つの奇跡を作り出そうほらあなたの色もう覚えたよ行きたい場所があるの大丈夫行っていいよでも帰る道を忘れないでね少なくとも彼女の部分を書き終える前に私が哀愁の城に入り私が英語の国を落ちる迷える旅人よ振り向きなさいまだ私たちに絡みつく糸を断ち切りたくないから。First one is Pardophilis. As we've just introduced. In her own words, she's worlds apart from the other flame chasers. And is the most carefree of them all. After all, enjoy the day sun while you can. Next, we have Grisio. We just heard her voice in the trailer, sounding ethereal and pure. It's hard to imagine that such a young girl could be one of the flame chasers. Judging by that painting in the background, things look bad for May. It's like being locked in chains. We can tell from a signet that the powers of the sixth flame chaser have something to do with painting. 
Seems like May will be having a pretty hard time. And now we are looking at the ninth one. Cosma, the bearer of the signet of daybreak. It's said that his horn and gauntlets are side effects of his metamorph surgery. His powers may be related to the dancing flames and horns at the base of his signet. Our next flame chaser has already been revealed. The fifth, Velvi of Helix, Elysian Rome's top engineer and magician. And lastly, the third who bears discipline as a signet, it's Aponia. Previously in the Elysian Rome, Aponia's name has been mentioned multiple times by Sue and others. But being ranked third by Elysia proves she's a bit different from the rest. Now the chains and symbol on her signet hint at the nature of her powers. Perhaps she'll also play a key role in the future of the realm? Ultimately, the Elysian Rome is for testing successors, so May can't really get hurt, right? That's really hard to say. The Elysian Realm also has people like Dr. Mobius and Kalpas. But don't worry, she's strong after all. Aside from the new flame chasers, the Elysian Realm hub has also received a full upgrade. Captains will be able to explore the hub, interact with characters in the room, and get a closer look at items like Remembrance Sigils. It will offer a much more immersive experience. Weekly challenges have also been optimized. Rewards will be given as points instead. We added new stage effects and optional buffs. Through strategic setup, they can be tremendously helpful in battle. We look forward to your performance in the Elysian Realm after the update. We have also added some Remembrance Sigils. Equip different Remembrance Sigils to activate different support skills. You can cast them at the right time once they are charged. Essentially, it's an optimization that makes the interface more intuitive and combat more fun. Reverie's Calico and Fallen Rosemary can also be used in the Elysian Realm after the update. For some reason, I find myself thinking about the endless Alf Rune cycle strategy. I'm so excited to see Rosemary in the Elysian Realm. In addition, Kalpas will appear as a boss in a new story. But he may not be the one picking fights. Who's behind it all? Where will this elusive thread of fate bring May to? Will May get burnt by Kalpas' red-hot rage? Or will he end up burning himself? I believe May will pull through, even if she must face Kalpas head-on. We'll see how it all unfolds in the new version. Participate in Elysian Realm events to get Fervent Tempo Delta's outfit, 8-Bit Fever. It's a light and refreshing outfit. Another outfit in the update is Tipsy Hour, tailor-made for Miss Raven as Midnight Absent. Honestly, this outfit reminds me of when she was working with Hexor Bunny at Raven's. Ah, the good old days. Back to the outfit. The long ponytail gives her a cooler look while running, and the crow's eye and dagger at the waist give the charming Raven a touch of danger. That's all for Raven. Now, let's look at the new full star ball, Cerulean Flare. After the update, you only need to complete one login mission and three specific missions to get this weapon for free. Captains without a strong 4-star bow can seize this opportunity and get one for free. There's more than free weapons and outfits. We'll be rerunning the Empyrean Legend event. Dark Bolt Jonin's outfit, Peach Sanctuary, will be rerun together. I can't wait to explore Sancho with the Celestial again. The Starless Night event will open near the end of the new version. It will reward crystals, Honkai shards, Reverie's Calico fragments, and more. Better yet, there will be a top-up event. Top up 6,480 crystals or bead chips to get Hersher of Thunder rank up stamps, Dear and Korra rank up stamps, Ancient Legacy, and other bonuses. The outfit supply for the Anchor's outfit stellar promise will rerun in version 5.6 for a limited time, so don't miss it if you're a collector. S rank Battlesuit's Hersher of Thunder, Azure Empyria, Bright Knight, Excelsis, and A rank Battlesuit Valkyrie Gloria will end their dorm supply. After looking into your feedback, we have optimized Battle Pass, Non Exalted Abyss, Daily Duty. 
the daily mission screen and added the quick claim button to improve the overall user experience. The weekly BP cap has also been increased. Captains can now complete missions to gain more BP to level up your BP status. More BP means faster leveling. So we increase the rewards for BP levels to above 70. Every level above 70 randomly gives rewards such as crystals and boosters. As for non-exalted abyss, the new activity Q Manifold will replace Direct C. Q Manifold has many floors, which give rewards when cleared. The position in a group no longer determines the rank. The number of floors completed decides whether you rise, drop, or remain in rank. Simply put, this will make the abyss more friendly towards the new captains. As for the secrets of the deep end and the future of May, you can discover them in-game. See you next time, captains! See you next time, captains!